as the state contends with a so-called triple-demic. It's a surge in COVID, flu, and RSV cases. Despite that, new statewide numbers show few residents are heeding the warning. Healthcare writer Lilo Stainton joins me now with the latest. Lilo, I want to get your reaction first to this news from the CDC today. What do we know about long haul COVID? Because it's really remained a mystery uh, to most folks in the public health space. I, I think that's true. And I think it's sort of an enigma for patients too, right? We don't really, one of the problems is the symptoms can range from just persistent tiredness, um, which is, you know, always something that's hard to put your finger on. It could just be the holidays um, to, you know, crazy brain fog. I mean, I've read a story of a woman who forgot, you know, the steps involved in brushing her teeth. Um, so it can be that bad, and debilitating, like it takes an hour to send an email. Um, I think what, what little we do know is that as many as one in five people are, do end up with long symptoms, um, and they aren't necessarily the people who suffered the most while they were sick. So it could be months after, it could be weeks after, it could be even if you only had a mild case. So there's a lot we don't know. Um, but I think this is the beginning of knowing more, probably. Yeah, and of course, right now, we've got a lot of epidemiologists um, and the Governor Murphy, in fact, pushing folks uh, to get that latest booster, the bivalent booster that's available, warning about this surge that we're seeing right now. What can you tell us about the uptake in New Jersey? Yeah, it's not great. I mean, it's better than the national, but it's not great. Um, you know, you got to keep in mind that when we were talking about the original series, uh, Commissioner Percy Kelly set this goal as 70%, and that was based on some science that suggests, you know, you get up to that kind of a number and you begin to have some sort of community immunity. Um, now, we know that only 17% of people in New Jersey of the eligible population have taken the booster, the new booster. That ranges from as little as 6.5% for young children, the 5 to 11s, to up to 36 for um, senior citizens. Um, you know, there good news on the good news side, there are 80% of New Jerseyans or more that have had at least the original series, but that does wane over time. Um, on the other hand, I guess the good news side, there is also natural immunity, but it is not, you know, it is not a perfect shield and not, no one of these things alone is, is good enough, if you will, if you're trying to keep out, you know, COVID entirely. Um, so it's really a combination of things and the new vaccines are a really important part of that. I'm thinking too about some of our most vulnerable residents, uh, the elderly and nursing homes right. where COVID just really tore through those places. Right. I just did the math again. It, it's, you know, it's more than a quarter of the deaths in the state. It's nearly three in 10 deaths in the state have been attributed to people who lived in or worked in nursing homes. Um, you know, you, those numbers are higher. New Jersey, again, is doing better than the norm um, or the state, the national average. It's 51 percent of residents and 39 percent of staff in nursing homes have been boosted or are up to date on their vaccinations in some form. It may not only be the new booster. That is better than the national average. But, um, you know, advocates say it's just not good enough. Um, on the other hand, and nursing home operators point out that the death rate has just plummeted. I mean, at one point it was more than, you know, 20 percent of the patients were being lost who got COVID from nursing homes. You know, now it's down to close to 3 percent. So there is good news in that. But, you know, COVID is still dangerous and it still, you know, spreads. Certainly a lot to consider. Lilo Stainton for us. Thanks so much, Lilo. Thanks, Bree. For more insight on the lagging COVID-19 booster rates, check out Lilo Stainton's full story on njspotlightnews.org. Support for the Medical Report is provided by Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association.